Cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest here on Author's Corner. His name is Paul Triton. He's written a book called Jacobus, A Eunuch's Faith, The Apprentice, book one. And I'll tell you, I talked him off the air, and wow, what a story he has. It's a coming out party, so to speak. Paul, tell everybody about your story and why it's so important to you to tell this story and to have written these books. Well, my story is that I am a gay man who did not come out until I was about 65. And I was a, I was a missionary and a teacher and all kinds of things for religious organizations. And I had to live a lie. And finally, one day, I said, I can't do this anymore. And I had to come out. And uh, of course, uh, my family turned their back on me. And, but I went through a period of pain before I came out. But after I came out, I didn't have pain, but, but I had disappointment. But then God helped me, and now I'm excited about my life. I'm excited about my husband, who, by the way, just had his 95th birthday. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, but what I've done in writing the book Jacobus was to reflect on so many of the experiences that I had in my life and many of my other uh, gay friends who are men of faith, like I am, have gone through, uh, caught between two worlds. And I thought, well, how can I write something that is not in your face, but yet can teach people the art of sympathy, the art of caring, the art of compassion for others who are different than themselves. And that goes for both sides of the discussion. And uh, so I took many little vignettes out of my own life and wound them back 2,000 years to put it in the life of a young man uh, in the Roman Empire period who was apprenticed out by his parents in, uh, or his father in, uh, in Spain to his cousin in uh, Syracuse, which is in Sicily, in the center of the Mediterranean trade. So I put this young man who was what Christ referred to and what the Greeks have always referred to as a born eunuch. In other words, he would never bear children, not because he was castrated or not because he took a religious vow, but because he felt uncomfortable with women and was attracted only to men. And so he went through this time of discovery and uh, the, the rest of it you'll have to read. But there's encounters of strong faith. He, is, he was in a Jewish family, and the, uh, the family which owns this big shipping company is Jewish. And they were searching for meaning in their lives because they were also homosexuals. And... Uh, so it, it takes you, book one takes you up to the point where they arrive in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And uh, the awakening, spiritual awakening in the whole group, there's 12 of them, and their trading partner was a rabbi from South India, uh, Many people don't realize that there was a large Jewish population in India at that time. And uh, there still is, for that matter. 
but now many of them have converted to Christianity through the years. And uh, in fact, uh, one of the reasons I brought South India into the story is um, Marvin, my husband, wrote uh, two books and they were translated into Tamil and Malayam mm -hmm. for the Christian community in South uh, India. So I decided to take my character to South India and uh, he discovered a whole new world, a whole new, uh, well, in, in following books, he's going to uh, meet Thomas. Of course, in the, uh, you'll, they'll also be at the crucifixion, which totally altered their perspective on faith and perspective on the personalness of God. Wow. And it, it's, uh, it's going to take the reader through history, but it's also going to take them through pain, agony, rejoicing, fear, slaughter mm -hmm. with uh, in in the second book is the destruction of Jerusalem and uh, hundreds and thousands of people crucified all around the city mm. as the Romans destroyed that city and uh, this the pain of being to being victimized yes I get by it. a world that, a world that that you can't change, but you can only change yourself. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Do you hope that, you know, I guess what is your great hope for people that read Jacobus, which of course you can pick up on Amazon. What do you hope, Paul? I, I'm hoping that people will be able to look at people that are different from them in maybe their values, their ethnicity, their faith, and still be able to see them as a, a, as God's children, and of uh, we're all one family, and there's no reason to claw at each other because we don't agree with this point or that point, or uh, even in the cr Christian faith, you know, you sprinkle, I dunk, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. <laughs> you know, we we have to break out of those barriers, and this is what Jacobus is trying to do. Because this young man has to identify first with who he really is, then he can identify with God, and then he can identify with others. Mm. And it's a uh, it's it's a very unusual, um, how should we say? A, a faith advocacy book. It advocates faith all the way through it, but the characters are married to other men or the slaves. In in Roman times, slaves, you know, they didn't have wives. They only had each other. Right. And you forget that that's 24% of the male population of the Roman Empire in the first century were deprived of female companionship. And it's, it's, a, it's a, I, I try to open people's eyes to the historical facts. I don't use contemporary terminologies or, or value systems. I, I try to use what these people lived with and how they dealt with it, and how God dealt with them through it. And it's, uh, yeah, there, there's, um, there's, there's some gay sexual elements in it, of course, but it's based on love. And the only time there's not love is when gays were raped, you know, the slaves yeah. were raped. In fact, one of my main characters was uh, captured as a six-year-old by the Romans and uh, trained to be a, a, um, a companion slave for his masters every evening. And, you know, that's 
child prostitution in its strongest form. It, but yet, this young boy grows out to be a, a wonderful man of God. And so, so that's life the point. Is full, yeah. Life yeah. is full of contradictions. We've got to admit it. If, it. if everything is just the way we want it, you're fooling yourself. Yeah. Yep. I, and, you, and you really nailed it in, in the book. And as we talk about you and, and wrap this up and, and obviously what people will see in it, I mean, you had an interesting life. You served in the U.S. Army and as a congressional liaison during the Vietnam War. Then you were yep. appointed VP for three family-run corporations in L.A. You were the director of operations yep. at Life Publishing International. We could go on and on. So we thank yep. you so much for sharing your story and I think the historical aspect of it is absolutely fascinating and we can embrace differences and that is the true meaning of the book. So, Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Kate. I, I appreciate in your invitation to be here. And we'll tell everyone you can pick up Jacobus again, Paul Triton's book. You can do that by going on to Amazon.com. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Kate. Have a great day. <laughs> 